Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. My thoughts on the Hamilton special. This might be one of the most anticipated videos that I put out. You guys have been asking me my thoughts and you know what I actually feel about the special. Y'all are about to find out, so let's go. get this started before I give you any of my thoughts I have to say this is one of the most spectacular most innovative most I can't even put it into words how amazing the performances the lyrics the, the just the lighting everything is just so amazing about this special about this performance these performances I can't say I can't praise it enough it is very very amazing I might have some unpopular opinions about this special and no I don't consider it a movie I do not consider the Disney Plus special of Hamilton a movie or a feature film and you guys might get upset about what I'm about to say but that's okay we're all entitled to our opinion but I just ask you please make sure it's respectful so getting into it when I say that these performers tore up the stage and just did just a phenomenal job, every single one of them, I mean that. I really, really wish I was able to see this show in person with the original cast. It is so unfortunate that I haven't and that I probably won't. But we did get the next best thing with the Disney Plus event special. The thing about Hamilton is since... 2017 I've had this soundtrack on a loop and I just adore it so much the first time I listened to it all the way through I, I was just astounded with the performances itself um and it, it, it just it was breathtaking now in 2020 we get this event special and I started to watch it and I think my issue was I kind of started watching it on my phone um I was out out and about and I started watching it on my phone. Okay, let me check it out. You know, I'm not really doing anything. I'm a little bored. So let me just check this special out. And it did not do it justice at all. You have to watch it on your television. You cannot watch it on a small screen mobile device. It does not do it justice. And it's kind of disrespectful. Let's be honest. I cut it off like after like three songs and I said, okay, I'm gonna revisit it on the television, on a bigger screen, so I can like take it all in and and give it the viewing that it deserves. And I started it from the beginning, I rewatched the first three songs, and it, it was just such a difference in how I felt about about it. And, and I, I think it's mainly because I hyped it up in my head so much, I had kind of unrealistic expectations for it. I know that these performers they perform almost every night. They're kind of tired, they're kind of winded, but that did not stop them from giving it their all. But it is different than the studio version, as most things are. We got Lin-Manuel Miranda, he's just a genius, like, I, man, no words, no words. Although he is not the best singer out of the group, the way he articulates the lyrics are just so profound. Jonathan Groff, even though he wasn't in that many songs, he sang maybe two or three songs, it was just so bold and so heavy hitting. And seeing the event special with the the slobber and the and the the saliva coming out of his mouth as he's singing, that just made it as powerful, even more powerful than I could have imagined. Especially from listening to the soundtrack. Anthony Ramos and Davi Diggs. Oh my gosh, they Davi Diggs, man, the how lyrical he is and how he's able to enunciate and pronounce everything. And he's he plays two characters, and so does I'm Anthony Ramos, and they just pull it off so well. Anthony Ramos can sing, and he sings very well. Um, not the strongest of the group as well, and also uh Davi Diggs, he sings too, but um, the thing about Davi Diggs, he can really flow, like he, he, the, the, the words just flow, um, and, and he kind of raps, and man, 
breathtaking. So many breathtaking performances. I had to name them first because when we get to the ladies of this performance, especially Renee Elise Goldsberry, they took my breath away. And her and Satisfied, bro, I, I'm getting chills just thinking about it right now. Philippa Sue is great and I really enjoy her performance. And and I, I, her name escapes me. Let me know in the comments what her name is. Um, the, the lady who plays Peggy, um, she was maybe the weakest link in all the performers, but she was great too. We have so many iconic songs in this. And I know the ones that I name might not be your favorites, but these are mine. Wait For It, sang by Leslie Odom Jr. Satisfied by Renee Elise Goldsberry. You'll Be Back, Jonathan Groff. Dear Theodosia, What Did I Miss? It's, it's just like, you can name so many songs that just that are so, so amazing from this performance. Now I talked about the good. Now I gotta talk about the stuff that I kinda was iffy on. Like I said at the beginning, I felt like they were kind of tired because they had to perform so many times a week. I'm not sure exactly how many, maybe like five performances a week, six performances a week. That's a lot. And, and I know that they had been doing this for a while and then they filmed this. So it's not going to sound like the studio version. And that's what I had been listening to for years. The standard, the standards was way too high. I expected them to go out there and give a studio version performance. That ain't gonna happen. But for some reason, I feel like it still had an effect on my thoughts about the performances in this show in its entirety. Also, I felt like Leslie Odom Jr. wasn't as strong in this performance as he could have been. I don't mean to single him out, but these were my thoughts as I was watching it. When I was listening to Wait For It, the beginning of the song is supposed to be kind of low, kind of slow. I think towards the middle of the song when it was supposed to hit you, it was supposed to bring it, it was supposed to bring it. I'm willing to wait for it. You know, I just feel like it was, it was a little, little lackluster. And I hate to say this about this performance because I love this song. That's just how I felt. And the last thing that I have to talk about that I have been dreading this whole review is I felt like I enjoyed listening to the soundtrack more than watching the complete show on Disney Plus because I started to lose interest a bit after song maybe 25 to 30. I was starting to lose interest and I got on my phone and I just kind of found myself listening to the music like I usually do with the soundtrack. I know for a fact if I was there in a seat, it would have captivated me the whole time. The fact that I wasn't there, I think I kind of got a little distracted. I wasn't paying attention towards the end. So it honestly might have been like after song 20. And there's 46 tracks, 46 songs in this event. By the last like five to six songs, I was ready to turn it off. And I hate saying that. I hate saying that, but that's the truth. I'm not saying that these performances were not amazing. I'm not saying that these performances were lackluster. I'm just saying that it didn't keep my attention the entire time. Don't get me wrong. I will be listening to the soundtrack over and over on a loop, but will I revisit this event special on Disney Plus? Probably not for a couple years. So those are my thoughts on Hamilton. I know that you guys might be upset about my thoughts, about my negatives, but it is what it is. That's, that's how I feel. Let me know what you guys thought about this event special, about the soundtrack, just about the overall performances in the comments. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter AJ reacts to, as well as Letterboxd, where I do all my movie reviews. And in this case, event special reviews. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.